All right, guys, welcome back to the Jefferson College School Podcast. Today, me and Nick are doing our preview and prediction for the 2022 Florida State Seminoles. Mike Morvell, back for his third season, 8-13 and in his first two years here in Tallahassee. Alex Atkins, he's the offensive coordinator, spent a number of years under Willie Fritz as an O-line coach at Tulane. He spent the past two here as an O-line coach as well. He's going to step into a new role. Defensive coordinator is Adam Fuller, his third year at Florida State. He was the defensive coordinator at 2019 when they were – together in Memphis. Good effort in the portal, and I think they did a pretty good job recruiting this offseason. Um, they added 10 guys via transfer. They also were 21st in recruiting. I think that's a solid rank for only 16 commitments for Florida State. How do you feel about this offseason, Nick? A lot of people called for Mike Norville to lose his job after his second season, you know, losing to an FCS program early in the season. Certainly not a good look for the Florida, for Florida State Seminoles, but his recruiting has been really strong because he's got the Tallahassee. He's really built these ties. You know, they had the top recruit in the class in Travis Hunter for a while before a last minute switch to Jackson State to play for Deion Sanders. In general, you know, this portal the portal work and the recruiting work is solid. You know, like you said, only 16 commits, still 21st in recruiting, 10 ads from the portal, especially some offensive talent. I like Mike Norville here. I think he deserves Deserves a couple more, at least two to three more seasons in Tallahassee. I think he's building something great. I like how the defensive coordinator you know, stays there. That could definitely help out this team a little bit. And I think Alex Atkins is a wild card. And just see what he can do after stepping up for being an O-line coach. Looking at this offense, Jordan Travis, I really like him. Very reminiscent of Malcolm Perry from Navy from a couple years back with the size, the speed, the quick change of direction. He's a very good athlete. Quickness is Jordan Travis's best trait, I'd say. Respectable arm. Velocity isn't great because the ball it hangs in the air a long time when he throws downfield, but he gets it downfield and keeps it out of harm's way for the most part. He keeps his eye downfield at all times when he's outside of the pocket. That's where he's most dangerous, outside the pocket, making plays, keeps his eyes downfield. I love what he brings to the table in that category. Only 201 passing yards per game last year for Florida State, so the passing game certainly needs to get more of a boost. They add a number of transfers in the receiving core. Micah Pittman from Oregon is mainly a special teams contributor, Winston Wright from WVU did both at West Virginia. He's a good kick returner and pass catcher. He's probably going to be a leading receiver for them. 60-plus grabs, 700 yards a season ago. And they also got Johnny Wilson from Arizona State. He didn't do much there, but he's a 6'7", 230-pound guy. He can block. I think he's a red zone threat as well. How do you feel about this passing game that should certainly be on the come up this fall? I'm excited in Winston Wright. Like you said, did everything he could at West Virginia. Bit of a wild card player. You know, Pittman coming in as well. People said Pittman's the real highlight here. I don't know if I agree with that, but I think Pittman will also have a good season. I think Jordan Travis is a, is a solid quarterback. I like that he's an athlete, good runner. I think he has potential to step up this year, a good year. The running back running back room could be a little bit better. Ward, projected running back one. I like the speed. He has good vision. The offensive line is definitely going to need a lot of help. I think that's where this offense really could use the best help. The offensive line, questionable. You know, the run blocking is solid, but are they going to be able to protect Travis, give him that time in the pocket to find a guy like Wright or Wilson, sort of find someone downfield and make some plays? The 201 yards passing per game, it's going to have to step up for this offense. I think they can raise it because I think, I think Jordan Travis is a solid player. So interesting to see what they can do in that department. Yeah, like you said, there's more contributing factors than just the passing game having a lack of talent or a lack of quarterback. Because I think they have those this year. Ontario Wilson, Keyshawn Held, longtime veterans. Both are 175 pounds. They're both smaller pass catchers. Jakai Douglas, gadget player. I'm very excited to see what they do with him. He can be used as a running back and a receiver. I think Norvell really likes this group. And then that adds on to a strong running game, I would say. Trishon Ward, 5'10", 192. Very fast. Twitchy as they come. Makes minimal cuts, but does not... You know, he does a lot with them. They're very small cuts, but he can take it to the house in a hurry. Very great vision. 700 yards on 100 touches, about seven yards per play for. I really liked what Trishon Ward brought to the table last year as a freshman. I think him and Ward, Travis and Ward, that is, this year, is potentially a speed option. I'd love to see that a lot because they have plenty of speed, those two, especially on the edge. That would be a nasty combo. Do you think that's a great idea for this offense? I don't see why, with this talent, they don't have a big improvement in terms of least balance. I actually love that idea. I think Ward and Travis, like you said, that speed combo together will be fantastic. I love the speed Ward especially has. Lightning quick on his feet. He can make some great cuts. Really good if the, the offensive line can block and find them holes. He's going to dominate this year. I think he's a real opportunity. He had a great year as a freshman. He comes back another year in the system. Norvell likes his guy. I think Ward has real potential here to step up this year and then step up in years after that very talented running back. And I think this is there's a real potential for this running game to make some ground. You know, Only 177 yards on the ground last year they can really step that up this year for sure trey benson he'll probably be the backup in oregon transfer 215 pounder only six carries as a duck so he does not have a lot of experience lawrence to though he's another player that should have gotten more touches last year 
I like the receiving group a little bit more than the running back room, but they certainly have the headliner there in Sean Ward. So I like the skilled positions on this offense. This offensive line, it hasn't been good in years, it seems. Promising left side, though, Robert Scott, a really good run blocker. People see the NFL potentially in his future. He'll continue to grow. Left guard, Dylan Gibbons, very strong run blocker as well. Caden Miles, he's coming over from Wisconsin. He might be the right guard or the center. 6'3", 321. Another guy who's a people mover. Also picked up Bless Harris in the transfer portal. He's probably going to anchor down the right tackle spot. Physical and aggressive. You know, if you're noticing a theme here, it's they want a lot of good run blocking help. And I think they certainly are moving more and more towards that goal. How do you feel about this offensive line that picks up two notable transfers? I do like the work they did with the offensive line and the transfer portal, but in general, I think the offensive line is still weak here. There's a lot of room to improve. They're going to have to get some reps and get some practice in because they're just, in general, it's been kind of weak recently. But if the offensive line can start really working, especially in the run blocking department, it can really benefit this team. Yeah, I think overall, Mike Norvell is a very solid group. I'm very excited to see what this offense does. And I hope they do incorporate ways to have Ward and Travis attack opposing defenses at the same time because uh, that's a nice little combo there with the quickness. Looking at defense, they were much better than in 2020 in all areas. Pass rush was better, run defense, pass defense. They had 14 interceptions last year. All of them came by freshman or sophomore, so a lot of young talent stepping up. And then they had Jermaine Johnson. He was a first-team All-American, a quiet All-American, too. People didn't realize how good he was, worked his way into the first round of the NFL draft. He's gone, though. How do you replace him? Well, you don't. He's just that good. But Kier Thomas, he's also gone as well. So they're going to have to have some of these young guys really step up. Derek McClendon, he's a high-motor guy, very strong. 6'4", 255. He was very solid during his redshirt freshman year. He's actually entering his fourth year with the program, though, so he's got plenty of experience. This pass rush obviously takes a massive hit. How confident are you in their ability to replace Johnson and Thomas? It's tough to replace a player like that that's so talented. Johnson, a guy that we both really love, the high upside there. The Jets got a great pick in the NFL draft. But I look at McClendon, like you said, fourth year of the program. I think he has real opportunity to step up and kind of fill that role. I look at Fabian Lovett as well, very talented player. I think he's solid. He can get some good reps. And then Jordan Verse, he's also a t- solid player up front. Those, those three are going to headline this this front for the defense. I think they have great, great opportunities here. I think it's going to run through McClendon. I think he can make a lot of good plays, make some tackles. I'm really interested to see what he can do. This defense was better than a lot of people thought it was going to be last year. I think they're going to kind of stay in that same sort of area. 26.5 points per game. I think that's right where they belong. Jared Verse, highly wanted pass rusher from New Albany, 10-plus sacks last year, athletic and productive. We'll see how he handles the step up in competition, but a lot of people wanted him before to stay got him, so that's a big one there for Norvell and crew. Like you said, Fabian Lovett, though, summer shock he came back. People thought he could have been a late day three draft selection. Outside of him, though, they got Malcolm Gray, Robert Cooper, 6'5", 335, and then Jarrett Jackson. He was pretty disruptive. So I'm pretty confident in this interior defensive line. I think it's pretty deep. And uh, some of those guys we mentioned in the pass rush, too. Very excited for this front seven as a whole. They picked, Looking at the linebacking core, though, they picked up Tatum Bethune from UCF. He had 100-plus tackles a season ago. They also get DJ Lundby back and Kalen Deloach. You know, the, this linebacking core, nothing was too impressive about them last year, but the experience is back, and that's massive for this defense. I really like what the linebacking core can do. Like you said, it wasn't super impressive, but they bring back this experience. I love the kind of amount of guys they're bringing back. Six significant amount of players coming back that really sort of help out and lead this linebacking core. Lundy, I think, has a real opportunity to step up and just see what he can do. Yeah, that, I mean, there's not much to say about the linebacking core. Other than they did pick up a 100-plus tackler and buffoon from a close school right down the road in Orlando. So that's all I really have to say. DJ Lundy, though, is a good run defender. We'll see what happens. I like the experiences back, though. That's really what they need. Look at the defensive back group. I'm very excited for this group as well. Jamie Robinson, stat sheet stuffer from a season ago. He was impressive for the Florida State Seminoles. Akeem Dan, former five-star. He's expected to take that next step. And also pick up Sam McCall, a high-end recruit. Very versatile, physical defensive back. Figures to see significant time as a true freshman. A lot of inexperience at cornerback, so that might allow him to get thrusted into the action. How do you feel about McCall? Do you think he'll get on the field much? And then talk about Jamie Robinson a bit. There's a lot to like about Jamie Robinson. Like you said, a stat sheet stuffer, really talented player, makes a lot of impacts, great tackler. I really like to see what he can do. And like you said, McCall, he has an opportunity to step up here with the weakness in the secondary. He can step up and get some really good minutes, and kind of show what he can do, especially early on in the season. He can start playing when that in the early part of the schedule, get some good experience. He can have a real potential to dominate for this team and be a, be a strong player. Yeah, Robinson, his number is 84 tackles, four picks, seven tackles. Well, he also had two forced fumbles and a couple of pass breakups. He was just all over the field for them last year. This group was dominated by young players all around. This is a pretty phenomenal unit. Very excited to see what they do this fall. Um, And they were pretty impressive last season. So I think there's a lot of upside on this defense. 
What is your final thoughts on this unit before we move to our prediction? Defense is not as bad as people say it is. A lot of people dog this team saying their defense is terrible, but only gave up 26 and a half points per game last year. You know, only gave about 300, gave about 377 yards per game. I think this defense has a real potential here. They replace a strong player in Johnson who is really tough to replace a player we absolutely love. But I think Robinson has potential to step up this year. I think Fabian love it. I'd like to see what he can do. Top to bottom, this defense is good. I think they'll be right where they were last year. And I think they can even have a potential to improve a little bit. Looking at our schedule preview and the prediction here, um, it's a pretty, stru- pretty interesting slate. They start the season on August 27th, and then they play LSU on a Sunday. I believe it's a Sunday, September 4th, against LSU in New Orleans. And then on the road at Louisville, I have them going 1-2 and two to start the season. Even though this run defense has heavily improved last year, it's still a struggle area for them. They got dominated by a number of teams on the ground. Um, they actually held up pretty well against Louisville on the ground last season, but I'm still concerned of their ability to get after opposing runners and get generate penetration. I think the upside is there, but I'm not confident in it. Um, I think it's going to be a 3-3 three and three start to the year, though. I think they'll beat Boston College and Wake Forest, but I think they'll lose on the road to NC State. How do you feel about this early six-game stretch for Florida State? This is a very interesting early stretch, and they start with an FCS program, then they get LSU in NOLA, technically a neutral site game, but you know, LSU fans are going to travel for that one. Then I think that Louisville Friday night game is a very interesting one. I think they can potentially win that game. That's a bit of a wild card here. Then you get Boston College and Wake Forest, two games I think are winnable for this team. Very interesting to see what they can do. Top to bottom, the schedule is very interesting. It has a bit of a different sort of feel to it. I like the I like some of the games on it. I like the fr- couple Friday night games. I like the game in New Orleans. Interesting opportunity for Florida State. Yeah, looking at the back half of the schedule, um, you know, it's an FB slate for them to play at Syracuse. I think they'll win there against Louisiana and Georgia Tech. But I think Clemson, Miami, and the Gators, even in Tallahassee, will have their number. Very excited for that November 25th Friday night showdown. That should be a close contest. I'm going to go 6-6. Six and six. I think this offense has a lot of potential, as does the defense. I'm really very excited for that offense, though, with the receivers they now have, the speed they have in their backfield with Travis and Ward. And they have a lot of young guys on defense. They were making plays all of last year. So I think this upside is here. I don't know really how I don't know what their highest ceiling is. I think maybe they could probably hit eight wins, but looking at the schedule, that's going to be a really tough pass. So I'm going to go six and six. I definitely think they could probably win seven or eight, but with the schedule, it's kind of a reach. How do you feel about the Knowles? Do you think they'll make bowl eligibility? Yeah, I think they'll go seven and five. I think they'll get that game against Louisville on that Friday night. I think that's going to be a real opportunity for them on the road to pick up a win early in the season. I think they'll go seven and five. I think they'll be in the bowl in a bowl game somewhere. I think that's the where they fit. But I can also see them beating Florida, like you said, on that Friday night in Tallahassee. It's gonna be a close game. So eight, you know, eight wins is not totally unrealistic for this Florida State team. But I also think six to seven is probably more realistic. I'm gonna go set I'm gonna settle on seven for this team. Yeah, I think the fans won't be happy with this record if that ends up being if that ends up coming to fruition, but they lost to Jacksonville State last year. So they were not great towards the back half of the year. They had to play a handful of close games, but they're still losses. So I think this would be a good mark for them because if they post this record or better, then most of the things we probably said came true. So I think this would be an exciting year for Florida State fans. Six and six, you're not going to be happy with, but I think um, all in all, when you look at December, I think they'll be pretty happy with this final mark. So that's going to be it for today. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Nick, as always, appreciate you joining me. Yeah, thank you so much. That'll be it for today. See you next time.